yeah, regardless, I think no number one, Lagos has definitely made me more spiritual. In fact, interesting. I can't even shower without blasting gospel music because I'm just scared that really? I'll see one. It's, it's actually really it's my phobia of insects that's mm. made me spiritual. Yeah. Because I just keep repeating, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians four thirteen, and that's why I find the strength to spray the, to spray the insects. I just kill it there. And there. <laughs> so it has made me more spiritual and rely on God more. No, that's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Backers. We've been getting a lot of feedback still. Really? Yeah. Was positive it... vibes. People, people, people liked our suffering, actually. <laughs> no, and that's the thing with Nigeria, yeah. <laughs> Negativity <laughs> seems to attract <laughs> all the positive stuff we've been saying in the last couple of episodes. No one's saying anything. <laughs> and the way is that we're suffering is everyone wants to watch that episode. <laughs> I got a hell of calls from left, right, and center. People were coming up the woodworks. Really? I saw what you've been going through. I'm like, it's not finished, boy. <laughs> it continued on this week. <laughs> well, how are you? What happened to you? I'm I'm, I'm okay, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'm just I'm just at this. Uh, I'm at this point right now. It's like we're really, really settling into Nigeria now. You know what I'm saying? Like we're really kind of getting it in. Um, it's a lot of bullshit, man. Really? It's a lot of bullshit in this country. Okay. A lot of fakery, a lot of people talk this and that. It's a lot of uh, nonsense. Yeah, you and, have a lot of that, and, don't you? Yeah, yeah. And mm. I want to just, <laughs> I just want to make sure that, I just want to make sure. So, when you isolate, isolate yourself a little bit from the bullshit, you cannot, you can see it. Okay. Like you can see it from a, from a long view. And then you can, you can see when it's coming because it's like, you're this you're on this side of the, of the fence, and you can see when someone's coming with some bullshit because you can spot them a mile away. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's what I've been I've been learning to do lately. You have got to be able to tell the real from the fake, and it's a lot of nonsense. Hundred percent, yeah. And there's a lot of wisdom in that, but I'm not going to dive into more deep. But it's a lot of nonsense. But do you mean yeah. it with staff? Do you mean it with friends? Do you mean it with like? Because I know definitely when you're trying to hire someone, mm. they embellish. The Nigerian's never going to tell you no. Mm. So they'll tell you yes, and then go and figure it out after. No, me, I'm obviously like, like you know, we we call our everybody in my company. We call us for Spartans, Spartans right? yeah. So as Spartans, you, there's no way that you will not be found out in less than a week or two if you're exactly. not Spartan. It's yeah. Everybody just message me. This guy is not Spartan. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Everybody, we have a Spartan check. Everyone yeah. checks everyone mm-hmm. to make sure what meeting at that level. So they message me saying you're not a Spartan, and yeah. I even feel you're not a Spartan. You're getting out. Yeah, you have so to. So at the end of the day, I'll, I'll give you the benefit that you get in, but you, you're more likely to be out very soon. Yeah, if, not, if you can't hang. Yeah, man. So a lot of founders are saying are saying the same thing, but it's it's hard to find good talent. Mm. Um, not just talent. Consistent when, when talent. Consistent talent. The world talking about it's just like people, friends. Yeah. Um, kind of business partners and all this other stuff as well. Mm. Like you've got to be able to uh, tell the the kind of what's real and what's not real. Mm. Um, I give people a lot of deadlines now. I'm very strong on deadlines. Mm. Um, no, 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 seriously, you got to be strong on deadlines. So, like, I want this to be signed by X amount of X X day or X day. If not signed by X, it's going somewhere else. Yeah, right. So you got to put everybody on a deadline because people here just seems to. If you just let them flat float, it just seems to kind of just do whatever they want and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, that's just some situations and yeah that. I hear you. How have you how have you been <sighs> so no you, you've actually finally moved in right isn't it? so yeah yesterday was my first full day inside the house we thank the lord god almighty for progress <laughs> after running away from that place for six weeks i finally made it in by myself settled myself in you know nice. um so i'm really proud of myself actually because I, I almost thought for a second it's the day is not coming mm. but it has uh however it's not been without it's it's, it's um without. yeah <laughs> that's like, good like there was the day i said okay fine let me just verge in the kitchen let me cook a goosey try to turn the gas yeah. no gas was coming out damn i was like hold on i literally bought a brand new like 25 20 
12.5 kg cylinder. And nothing came out. Um, nothing came out. <laughs> Only for the, the cook next door to tell me that the leak, there's a leak on the cap. So that whole oh, gas went away. Just went into the air. Oh, shit. And then me that I ordered everything online, I was like, oh, for like seriously. Dang, I had to speak. now try and find someone to come and do, do the refill, bring the cap, mm. um, etc. And then also... So, but the gas, though, how do you get gas in your house? Do you kind of just approach anyone that sells gas or... What, so I've now got it? a connect. So all these things, holler at the concierge if you, need, concierge. If you need a connect Shout for out. that now. Um, but he, I don't know, he shot took my tank and filled it up with gas and brought it back. And he bought me a new cap. He said five-year warranty. So that's what I like to hear. So hopefully none of my gas is leaking out again. Five-year warranty? On the, on the cap, yeah, the regulator. Oh, yeah, the cap, yeah, the regulator, regulator, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, that makes sense. So, um, so that's that. And then also kind of got locked outside the house. <laughs> this Lagos is just, <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. And you I, you know, like, I think it was the day, you know, the day after I saw you, I was so high. Yeah, yeah, You know, yeah. Lagos deals coming through. You're just happy. You're, you're good. And then next week. Before you know it, yeah. Coming back for one meeting. Can't get into your house. Can't get into your house. Shit. So the smart lock that these guys installed That's decided to reject thing. me. When I saw that on, on the thing, I was thinking, well, how would you put so much technology in this? Like, and I would you know never much... trust it. So I never trusted it. But unfortunately for me, the back door, the key was inside the door. So you know you can never oh, put a key can, in. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm by myself. Wait, why was the back? Why was the key in the back door? Because when I was doing the gas, you left it there. Yeah, I locked it and left <laughs> it in there, not knowing that the front door would now fail me. So what did I have to do? God helped you. All by myself. 9 p.m. on a Friday. Oh God, I've really suffered. Did you climb the fence to go back and open the door? <laughs> Those days I was like, oh, since six for eight, climbing the fence is a good point. <laughs> it's only six for days. <sighs> this is what I did. I, I, I typed in Carpenter on Google. I rung, I rung every single number within the Lecky, like, um, VI oh, environment. Okay. One, then I just did my whole damsel in distress voice. Like, I'm locked out of <laughs> my house. Please, can you come? One guy eventually came. Um, we got a ladder, had to break the security bars. To you broke the security bars to get in? It took about 45 minutes. Um, I may, if how, depending on how I feel. No, nah, you're going, you're, gonna, you're really, you're really bull, bullish think, about this stuff. I don't think people actually understand. <laughs> you're really trying life. to be in Nigeria. <laughs> I live a very crazy life. I've tried to, I've just tried to live a normal life. But the mm. thing is, I, I just accepted this is just what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have very high highs and very low lows. Mm. And in, in one day, I can cycle between high and low mm. three to four times. Um, but it is what it is. Thank God I'm just like solution oriented. So when it happens, instead of crying and breaking down, I'm like, okay, cool. How do I so, sweat it out? So do you think this is like peculiar to Nigeria? Do you think you had you went through these highs and lows when you were No, in my life was like this in London, bro. Really? Like my friends, they, they if, after they call me, if you didn't call me for three days, you'd be like, this amount of stuff happened in three days? <laughs> like I just literally have that kind of 150 mile per hour life. It's a blessing. It teaches you a lot. Uh, but sometimes you just want peace. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you just kind of want that peace. But it is what it is. Uh, Nigeria makes it on steroids, definitely, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, praying for a peaceful week. That's good. Before though. all these men come to join us. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, December's coming soon. Boy. What's your plans for December? So basically, right, you can talk about that this is December and what that actually means in, 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 in Lagos specifically. I know it happens everywhere in Nigeria, but I know it's kind of a big deal in Lagos, right? Mm -hmm. So so what is actually the third of December? Well, as a December baby, I'm well versed <laughs> on this topic. <laughs> because me and my friends used to fly to, um to come for dirty December, like almost every year. And that's birthday period for me. And it, it was, it's lit, like, hello concerts, shows, mm. clubs are lit, um, lots of boat events, like, beach events. However, now that I live in Lagos, the excitement is just gone. These really? guys, These guys come and blow up the road, you know, hello traffic. Yeah, the traffic situation is, is quite bad. I remember last, last uh, I was trying to go out, and then I literally left my house at, like, I think at nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. I got to the venue, it was like 11 o'clock. And I was just thinking, wow, why would I even be in this situation? Like, why do I want to even go out? And that, that really put me off the, uh, the going out during Christmas. I think actually we actually have more fun going out all the time during the year than the December period. 100%. Because it's just, it's just way too much. And everybody's just like, yeah, the restaurants are so busy. Everybody's busy. People just do the nonsense, right? So yeah, it's not quite cool. 
and also now that the toll is open, that's helped it a lot. But thirty December, when that toll gate was operational, was hell on earth. Really, I've Niger- never been. I've never seen one. When Nigerians don't drive yeah. in a straight line, so you can imagine mm. that volume of cars just trying to just ram themselves into. One. And and you know what, a wise man. Somebody just told me this yesterday. The way he articulated it, I thought was so fantastic. He's like, okay, I'm always complaining about the urban planning in Lagos, but he was like, yeah, honestly, can you imagine that we have one road, Lucky Epe Expressway, for mm. twenty million people to use. Do you know how crazy that is? Mm. Everybody just, it's just forced to use that route, you know? Even if you're going to the mainland and you're going on your way to Kedja, like there's that there's that road as well. Like everyone's just kind of forced to use the same route mm. and it's four lanes. So you can imagine the volume of cars that go through every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's, it's crazy. Like right now, I've fallen out of love with Dirty December. Mm-hmm. And you UK people that like to think that we're going to be your tour guides. Yeah, nobody's doing your tour I'm I'm blocking all your numbers. Yeah, I'm <laughs> so tired. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm tired. I feel like I'm going to start traveling out from next year from in December. December right? Yeah. So that, that, make, that makes actually a lot of sense. Um, yeah. Traveling for December. I think that that's good. Yeah, getting out of night. I don't think that, I think that because we live here day to day, the hype is kind of worn off for us. Mm-hmm. Um, where would you like to kind of go for December? I mean, what are the what are the places that you think would be quite fun? So I did my twenty twenty three budget. This okay, week. okay, okay. <laughs> so wait, wait. No, 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 no. First of all, first for anyone to do, go ahead and start doing a budget for next year, you know this person's person is a CFO. For... <laughs> so you're budgeting your life for next Honestly. year. Honestly, and so let's talk about that. So <laughs> how how are you? Wait, first of all, how much? Do you think it's gonna cost to run my life? Shalewa life. Shalewa's life next, next year. year. The yeah. economy of Shalewa. I almost grabbed my inhaler yesterday when I saw <laughs> these numbers. I was like, "Is that correct? Are my calculations correct?" And you know, I'm always building these elaborate spreadsheets. So <laughs> I broke it down into like self care, house, um, business expenses, mm. travel expenses, and like finances, which is like saving, investing, mm. all that kind of stuff. And then I now apply weights to each category yeah, yeah, yeah. and targets. So yeah, I broke it down and uh, I put in my numbers for next year. And <laughs> what is he looking? Is he looking? He's looking peak. Yeah, You're more than peak. It, it, I don't. I don't know how to to say the range, but. It's really, really high. Month monthly, what I need to pull in to be able to afford myself next year is really, really high. Oh shit! So how are you gonna do that? I mean, I mean, what are what are kind of thing measures you're putting in place to achieve that? Um, so that's the beauty. So the reason why I like my process. I mean, I've got a couple of sugar daddies on my phone. God forbid, no. it will never come to that. <laughs> I did actually allocate ten percent of my income for gifts. I actually put that in there, but we're gonna get there. <laughs> I did. Uh, yeah. I did. Funny enough, yeah. By the way, on a side note, popped into Shiro yesterday. Yeah. Just the average age in there was like forty five, fifty plus. In and Shiro? the girls that they were with were like my age. I'm like, is this the sugar daddy den? Yeah. I walked straight back out, well, it's, boy. It's time to fancy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what is going on here? <sighs> so, um, so yeah, like I did allocate 10% of my income to, to gifts because I just actually realized I've said no to people my whole life, but I'm off when you have a house to maintain, things peak. change. So, so yeah, I, so w- the way I did it was um, did all my wants for the year that determines the budget. Mm. Then I now uh, monthly, I did it on a monthly basis, how much I need to earn a month how much I need to earn a day. Then I now started the income and I started like attaching the income to the monthly, all the income sources I have at the moment. Mm. What's the capacity? What's the highest capacity for it to reach? And then I looked at how far off it was from what I need in a month. And then I prioritized the income. So what income comes directly to me? What income comes directly to a business that I have? And then I determine like what energy to put my time into. Mm. That's how I've um, articulated it so far. And yeah, I reconcile my expenses at every Saturday. Okay. I download my bank statement. I do it manually because it helps me think about, okay, you spent money here. Mm. Should you have really spent money there? Like it helps me slow it, slow it down because one thing I've noticed in Nigeria is just you, you spend a lot. Like London yeah. is the same, but you spend a lot here. Yeah, because I like, think you just fly everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and people expect you to give them money for every single thing. You know, so like you never know, you get it. Uh, an issue with plumbing in your house that goes somewhere 
da, 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 all these different things are always starting out. So you've got to make sure you keep a track of like, yeah, of what you're doing. Um, yeah. Exactly. Like when I was doing the spreadsheet, I saw how much I was spending on delivery charges because obviously mm. I order from Conga literally every day. Oh, and that reminds me, it comes to one order made at Conga. Conga, but... right? Mm. So, and then they have Conga Prime. Conga Prime is literally 2,000 Naira. I'd already clocked past 20,000 Naira delivery fees in mm. two weeks of Before November. You you so Conga I'm like, Prime, yeah. okay, just literally Conga Prime is 2K for three months. Mm. Then I know, okay, no delivery fee, so I can keep ordering what I want. Um, to the house So I'm, I'm going to do a post soon I literally Order everything online In Lagos Everything Everything But Is that Do you think that's the best way? For me yeah Yeah But so you don't have to Go outside and, and look for things Yeah 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 So it, it When you go out Some Things are Cheaper to price mm. For example Buying plants From the roadside mm. Is a lot more affordable Than Ordering it to the house. Okay. Yeah. yeah so like, like plants and stuff like that, you think that's cheaper. You can haggle it down to like 25% less. Mm. Um, No, to like 25% of the value that you would have done. So yeah, some things are cheaper, but I don't like the stress. And honestly, one thing I've noticed this week more than anything, yeah, because I cannot speak pidgin English, <laughs> it's really costing me a lot of issues. Why don't you go do some lessons? Yeah, shout out to um, Isezon, guys. Oh, they're doing um, yoga. They're preparing the pidgin English oh, pidgin course. English. Okay, they do, yeah. they're a language, uh, so it's a, a US guy that moved back and he has a language app. It's really, really good. The UI is fantastic. I've used it. They have all types of languages on there and pidgin English is coming soon. So once the class is ready, I'm going to mm. do it because... Yeah. These guys are going to the wrong address because they can't understand me. Yeah. They're getting frustrated. And then sure. I always have to give the phone to like a Nigerian guy yeah, to like speak, to the pigeon to them. Yeah. Yeah, you, um, yeah, you definitely get a, get a like a house help or something. I think that would be help. That would be helpful to you. Having a house help that can, that can kind of run errands and do all those kind of uh, tasks that's a little bit more mentally challenging when it comes to the discussing with people. <laughs> Right, so I think that's kind of that will help you out a, a lot more because you will struggle and you put yourself in situations where you shouldn't have to be in. It's a uh, distraction as well. Distracted from your from my time core, core activities. Yeah, it's just finding someone to trust. Though I've considered it, but it's just mm. finding someone to to trust. Trust is because I've really yeah. noticed a couple of things going missing. Yeah, mm, yeah. So I'm literally any CCTV installers. I'm gonna. I, put... I I remember when I was moving houses. For my old place and my new place, and you know me, I'm a perfume guy. Mm. So I had like a, a set of perfumes. I was I was starting getting into it, and then my driver at the time moved everything. I was oh no, no, I'm sorry, I did not move everything. So I moved to a new place, right? As soon as I got to the house, I literally I was like, wait, where are my perfumes? All of them. Like four, four decent ones as well. I literally went went back to the other house. I was looking around, didn't see anything. I called him and was like, oh, I put, I put it inside the, because, like, he was packing stuff. So he put it inside the microwave. Microwave? Oh, okay, yeah, okay. Like, yeah, it's it. off. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Like, it was off, putting the microwave to pack it all the way in. I was like, first of all, why would you even put it there without telling me you're putting it in there? And then got to the place. So when you're moving like this, you, I don't know if it's him or somewhere, where the new place there, because when you move to a place new, there are people there, but you never really, when you're still moving, you're never really kind of sure about what's going on. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, you gotta be able to check like especially your valuables, man. You move that yourself, man. Fam. The way I almost panicked, I was like, where's my passport? <laughs> because I was like, yo, I'm really tired of Lagos, but I need I might need to fly out early next year. Like, where's really? my passport? So your passport went off. Fam. I eventually it took it took like two days to find it, boy. Really? Now I, I, that thing is like close to my chest now. Both of them are like really close <laughs> to me because I'm like that's not something you want someone to mm. run off with. But yeah, I did, I've noticed a couple of things going missing, but it is what it is. Mm. Like, so on, yeah. uh, one thing on the conversation I wanted to have was like office spaces, mm. right? Because I'm, I mean, we're considering moving office spaces, right? Yeah. Where would you say um, good place to put your offices? Oh, well, that office situation is, is, is a bit mad, you know? An office on the island is really expensive. Mm -hmm. So, like, depending on the size of the team, option one is to find a co-working space. Okay. So, with a co-working space, it always starts in tiers. So, a tier, the lowest tier is, like, the open space. Everybody can choose a desk. It, it costs, like, it can cost anything from 5,000 naira a day to, like... 
twenty dollars a day or something ridiculous mm. like that. In some places, some places use dollars. That's an option. And then from there, you can get like booths. And uh, so when I was looking for an office, I think I went to like eleven offices on the island, mm. all between Lekki One, Vi and Nikoi. Like to have a room for four people to use is you're looking at five hundred thousand um, naira a month. That's wild. Yeah, for four people. That's wild. So it is wild, and I'm and I side eye all these businesses, and I'm like, are you man making money like that? Because you know, you're converting five hundred k every month. Yeah. yeah, I think some people are. Um, for four people, no, because when it's now a team of like eight people. Mm. But that's the thing, though. I think this co-working space, I'm making more money than they than than they're renting out that place for. So, like, I've seen I've seen rent of a decent office space for about three million a year, literally. For about three million, three million, million a, year. a year is is what on the market. That's just rent, space? though. That's not like including kind of furnishing, operational costs like diesel or. or Do um, you know how many square meters? What's the size of it? Oh, God, I can't remember. But it's like an average space. This is something that can fit in. Bigger or smaller than this room? Yeah, bigger, bigger than this room. Yeah, just like yeah, like this this floor, this whole floor, something like that. I so, yeah, I know they 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 kind of are. I've been looking because I'm we're thinking about moving it recently as well. Mm-hmm. And I've been looking at options, um, but it's there's always something about having an office that faces the Lake Expressway. Expressway. Oh, you mean the Lagoon side? I don't know if it's the Lagoon side, but I wanted to. I want something that can face the Lake Expressway Expressway so that you you can have your logo like. Oh, on main... like on a Zumba. You want that office on a Zumba and Badway? Yeah, but the, that goes from Zumba and Badway all the way down to uh, yeah. So like anyone that road. Okay. I feel like I feel like because access to walls is is easier. Yeah. So if anyone's getting to the expressway, they can just drop off and then they can get into your office. Mm. So that's one option, right? Um, I'm just thinking about a couple of options, but uh, yeah. I mean, three million. If that there's two hundred and fifty k a month, that's really not that bad. Yeah, but you that's but the thing that you're not thinking about the extra things. No, 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 the fees. Yeah. That's so when you add agency fee, you still pay that. those. I'm talking about like your operational, like furnishing. Yeah, um, internet, lighting, water, all this extra stuff that you're not thinking about. But that's part of your operational. That's um... what, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. If you're paying 500 k a month for a um for f- four co-working room. space, yeah, or for four seats on co-working space, yeah, then you're getting bumped. That's my point. Mm. That's what I'm saying. It's ridiculous. Yeah, you're getting yeah. bumped. That's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. That three million a year is not that is not that bad Mm. i mean like there's other options some people take uh, spaces um it can only be one million two million they take it inside a plaza Mm. you know a lot of these plazas are just empty because i I, I was for considering there's not a middle class there's not enough middle class to fulfill these plazas Mm. being active enough for retail so what happens is you tend to see the top floors like the top two to three floors being used as people's offices Mm. The only thing about that, I think the nature of your business is important because security wise, if you don't have a business that some people may want need to visit you in the office, I wouldn't recommend it. So if you don't have a business where people want to see you in the office? Yeah. What do you mean by that? So for example, let's say I have a business where people need to collect like badges from me or something. Mm. It makes sense for me to have uh, office in the plaza okay. but if I literally have a corporate business mm. I think that it's not a wise decision security wise why because the plaza is open so yeah okay fine you may lock your door but it's not as secure as literally having an office in a gate which is how everybody else's office is mm. so security wise I don't think it's like the the best no it's open to the public because mm. you're just a shop so so I was I mean, I mean I'll give an example Tesla had a strategy where they said they're not going to have, they're going to have showrooms where they kind of put in, in shopping malls. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we're kind of modeling our business in a very similar direction. Mm-hmm. So I think for us, if we have a showroom. Yeah, that makes sense. It's, that makes sense, right? Uh, definitely okay. in the plaza. Because um, they had a, Tesla had one in Brent Cross. Mm. That was when I was considering for that for a moment to get yeah. the Model X. The one that, you know, I was like, that's such a good car. Like when you have children, but I fall in out of love with yeah. the shape now. I don't think the shape is as nice as, yeah, it's not as, nice as, as nice I thought yeah. it was. But yeah, that's that's an option. A showroom mm. is um. So, so let's talk option. let's talk a little bit about beach houses in Lagos. Because you know what, right? I'd, like as much as it's such a, good idea and it's fun I don't think they're worth it 
I just haven't hunted against beach houses in Lagos. Why? What happened? Because either the quality is not good to find a quality beach house. You can only win them about one or two at the moment. Yeah. Um, and then also accessibility is like you've got to go and take a bow, you've got to do this, you got to, it's so much. And then if you go to the, the location as well, it doesn't even look like the area look, doesn't look good. So you have to go through difficulty <laughs> just to get to the beach house. <laughs> Maybe because I'm like a water baby, I have a different opinion. Oh, you like that kind of stuff, you? I like that it's not accessible. I like that you have to charter a boat to go to mm. Elisha. I like that, you know, it's it's a private beach house. Mm. I have been to really nice ones. I've been to more nice ones than not nice ones. The only thing about me is I would never sleep over in a beach house. You can't sleep over in a no, beach house? No, it's just like... Have you heard about any for anyone that slept over in the beach house? No, like, people do that. They do that for their frolicking and all that. But regardless, I'm not trying to be. <laughs> I'm not trying to be sleeping over at no beach house because, um, yeah, it's not. It's not this. Even though it's you can find nice ones, the luxury is not enough for me mm. to feel like I feel comfortable sleeping in, in overnight. Yeah, yeah. So I'd rather get a boat back at ten, eleven, mm. than stay over. Just stay over in the beach yeah. house. Yeah. But there's Sensillo, there's Pure Vida, there's Cove Beach House. Yeah, there's new ones. There's, um, there's other ones as so well. So I, I heard that that strip, they're kind of doing a whole development. Uh, um, yeah, they, I'll tell you the last, I think, well, both of them actually. Mm-hmm. They're doing a development, so they're going to make it look like a Vegas strip, apparently. You know, this is the thing about Lagos. They're always, they're always making one, doing one thing, <laughs> one smart city here, one this, that, and the other. I believe it when I see it, fam. <laughs> I've noticed not to get gassed again because people will sell you dreams. In yeah, boy, so. smart city. I don't know, but I've, I've not heard that before. I can research yeah, it. I'll, I, I'll look I mean, into yeah, because I know a couple of people were, going, were trying to get a place and they said, no, nah, it's bought by this guy already. This, like five or six places have been bought by someone already. Yeah, I can believe whole, that. Yeah. Whole work of, uh, uh, which is, I mean... We, I wish more stuff like that are happening actually in Nigeria, really, because I want more activities. I want it to be, to be. I want some more interesting things going on. Really, uh, we've kind of done a lot of them already, so it's um, it gets boring after a while. What I want is um, leisure cruises. I want oh, yeah. us to develop our waterway so that I can take a luxury cruise to Ghana, because the, mm. forget driving in Africa by road. And forget mm. planes. Like African travel with their planes are just dusty planes. Mm. So it's not like traveling from Heathrow Terminal 5, get a nice plane, you know, mm. from there. So African travel, like the planes are just a bit. Mm. So I would love for uh, not just Nigeria, but I would love for the waterways to be developed enough so that we could travel to other African countries. Are you worried about pirates? Uh, we'll handle that, man. <laughs> there is pirates though There is pirates around that There is the pirates ocean that I go into a lot There, there is pirates there There are a lot of pirates Around the, the, the waterways in There's Africa There's pirates everywhere though Yeah that's you know true what I'm saying It's just about security I've been stopped by police One time on the water Really? Yeah What uh, we, did they we say? We were on the way to Ilache. Um, I think it was the NDLA, NDLEA I think that's the drug agency Oh they thought you were pushing weight <laughs> 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 they shall stop the boat with all of us in it and wanted to search and say, does anybody have any contraband on the boat? And it was like 20 people. I think it was even two boats, 20 people that they stopped. So what, they, they would just be like, yeah, I've got contraband. In the like... middle of the ocean. <laughs> and you know, some guys, what some guys are like, they just try to banter them, play with them, and then they just let us go. So yeah, there's police at, there's police at night on the on the water. I've been on the water at night a few times and mm. there's, there's police about. But I just think it would be good for the economy. It'd be good for the economy, increase um, tourism, it will mm. increase currency flows between countries, Facts. Um, especially the ones that have, you know. No, you're right. I mean, we're all, uh, also, let's talk about this uh, Great West African coastline. Okay. So there's this conversation right now going on in, 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 in kind of the industry that there's the Great West African coastline where majority of the populace is settling down around this coastline between Lagos and Abidjan. Yeah. Right, mm. all that coastline going to like Lagos, Ghana, mm-hmm. Lomé, all, all that Every kind of, coast, yeah. All the way to Abidjan. And, and um, I want to really kind of, I, I want to kind of investigate that. Because I mean, I like, I like beach, beach lines, beaches and all the water stuff. Same. And I feel like there's a whole lot of things going on, developments and all these investments going along around this Great West African coastline. Fam, that Abidjan, their developments, because I know someone who's 
um, been hired to be like an architect on those kind of projects. Mm. Like the, the it looks incredible. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, shout yeah, out yeah. to my state as well. On the state, our coastline has also Are they're you, developed. Is there coastline on the state? Fam, our seaport is coming next year. Okay, that's and good. our seaport. I is heard like, Aquai bombs in some stuff though, but go ahead. Yeah, our seaport is literally. Uh, they're trying to say it will rival Lagos, but I'm sure it'll be complimentary to Lagos. But mm. to put things into perspective, our coastline is 120 kilometers and Dubai's coastline is only 70 kilometers. Mm. And that's Ondo State's coastline. But do you have Dubai so, money? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's so funny? And like, and that's the one thing about Nigeria that's so sad, yeah, because it's like so if much you, potential. the wealth of the resources, you know, mm. that we have, we should be at that stage but it's fine like well there's things happening we'll regardless get so we'll, yeah, get there. we'll get there so yeah i mean there's a lot of development going on around that coastline mm. and, and again a cruise would allow somebody to you know go to each country and and see yeah so i think it'd be a good right. idea for someone to do it so yeah um how's how's kind of now you're you're settling down you're planning for next year what are you excited about next year coming out because there's a lot of things I'm excited about. I'll talk about it, but what are you excited about next year? Um, in terms of Africa, Nigeria, uh, business, mm. um, other people moving back that you know and stuff like that. What are you excited about? The only thing I'm excited about is making sure that I hit them numbers month to month. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all work and business no, 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 for no. me. As talking usual. about hitting numbers, right? You guys have not been trying. Right. Who's you guys? I'm talking to all of them watching this, right? If you start sharing, I'll post to all your friends. Yes. Show your videos. Yes, yeah, support. Get it out there. Get the support yeah. going on because you want to keep content like this, keep coming in. Yeah. You've got to keep sharing that stuff. So definitely. Stop. <laughs> Stay you good, Nigeria. This is welcome to, welcome is to, Nigeria. Welcome to Nigeria. Welcome to Nigeria, boy. <laughs> That's how you'll just be working. Oh, that's another thing I need to buy an inverter. I got the prices for the inverter now. It's crazy, right? The guy said um, two batteries, 500k, four batteries, 1.2 million naira. Crazy. And it's like, if you were living in London that had electricity, you just pay off the grid. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to buy an you inverter. You buy it for, for, for millions. So, yeah. It is what it is. But yeah, they need to support. We've, we've been getting love behind the scenes, but... Definitely share it with people. Yeah, sh that you share think the post, enjoy get it out there and stuff like that. Mm. No, 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 and um, yeah, well, like I said, except for hitting those numbers, what else are you excited about? I mean, numbers are good, but what would they, what would they um, bring to you? If, let's say you hit the numbers, what, what would your life be like next year? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, you guys will see it. Ooh. I mean, like. Wait, should we take them behind the scenes though? Like, yeah, I would definitely want to next year. No, no, no I want content. people to comment. Comment in the comment section. If you want to see a, see a life behind the scenes in yeah. IMB, let us know. Yeah, 100%. Like, I'm actually down to show that and, and share more things with people next year. But what does life look like? I definitely. Um, I've got four trips I've put in there. Four yeah. trips? It's the Cape Town definitely there. Yes. We better, we better Cape Town was there. one Don't of them. That. Yeah. So traveling is the thing I'm excited for. Meeting other Africans because I've only been to Nigeria and Egypt. Mm. So I really have a lot of African travel to you do. Know, do you know that a couple of, I've got a couple of friends in Frankfurt in Africa which okay. we're going to go and see soon. Right? Yeah. Uh, but they really don't speak English. They really struggle with English. So like, Okay. Well, are we, um, are we, are you, well, you yeah, said je you, parle you, français. you've got um, oui. um, professional French, but not, yes. not um, for, um, everyday French. So do you think how are you going to survive in the French mm. country? Je étudie le français à l'école. Mm. Yeah, so okay. I did French up until A-level, so I'm good. Yeah. Right. So I can handle, I can handle the French, um, definitely. But I'm just afraid their countries are lit, boy, because... Some yeah, these... no, no, some of them are I'm getting it. Abidjan is French country, Senegal, there's a couple of Senegal yeah. as well. There's um I just wanted to be lit because I was at games like yesterday with Cameroon Cameroonian people and And they were not they were dry. Like, they just... behave bush, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> I said to God, they behave bushman. Frank from African countries, they behave bushman. That's what I'm saying. I just pray their countries are lit because <laughs> I don't want to go there and it's just on some mellow, mellow, mellow thing and their food as well. Sometimes I see their food, it looks like mashed up baby food. Nah, sometimes it looks like pieces of, of chunk of food put together. <laughs> it's, like, it's not blended. I'm <laughs> saying it doesn't like, a lot of other African countries' food just looks like, and yeah, yeah. especially, you know, I really want to go to Ethiopia as well. That's really, as well, but their man's That's food looks boy. a bit. Mm. It's, it's literally like, it's like, like, like porridge. Like, like, uh, <laughs> like age old non bread <laughs> with, with, with children do this, right? Uh, shout out to Ethiopia as well. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I think I'm so definitely... Sadly different though. The girls are fine this though. Yeah, they're gorgeous actually. Mm. Uh, so... Hey, Cape Verde. What are you saying about Cape Verde? So... Talk to me. I have a guy, one of my friends here. Yeah. I got shout, in Cape Shout out to you. Mm-mm. Right. He called me frustrated. I've not spoken to him like all year and he called me like, nah man, what are you going through over there in Africa? Because I've been trying to book a trip to Cape Verde yeah, for like over a month and... I'm going through hell. You can only pay in their currency. They're like... They're locking people out. Fam. He almost got scammed. Like, it, it's just been crazy. He's been so frustrated. Like, he's on his third or fourth property. Try. He's trying to book. So, yeah, he was just like, rah. Like, is this the way some some countries are? Like, mm. you can't even... You can't even get to the place. You know, a lot of times you pay when you get there. Mm. You can't even do all that. So, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but... um. Cape Verde is beautiful, man. It looks okay. It's so beautiful. People there are beautiful. Yeah. Um, and it's peaceful. It's kind of calm. Mm. If, you're, if you're trying to find like a Cuban vibe in Africa, mm-hmm. Cape Verde is the spot. Yeah. Um, I've got a lot of places that in Cape Verde actually. I'm still working on this spot. But, mm. Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely gonna start investigating any property maybe towards the end of next year. Yeah. Um, I heard that they're not as friendly uh, to Nigerians. I don't know if that's true. Um, but it depends on if you kind of what passport you used to kind of get in, really. Um, I've heard that um, from watching a lot of Wadamaya shows and, and Tayano shows. I've heard a lot of African countries are not so friendly to Nigerians. Yeah. For Nigerians. That's a sad thing, to be honest. Well, you don't, you, I mean, we're just loud people. We just. We... I feel like it's like British people going on holiday. A lot of Brits cause trouble when they go on their little European holidays. Yeah, but nobody stands up to them though because the, the, the British and nobody them. stands up to Nigerians. We're the giants of Africa. Like we, when we, when we, we, they don't like us, but I don't think, I don't think they stand up to us. I don't know, but mm. I've just heard like because what Amaya spoke about it a few times. It was like how he was having issues at the airport, and they would say they thought he was Nigerian. So when he says Ghanaian, they're like, oh, okay, we thought he was Nigerian, and then they mm. started becoming a bit more kind of open to helping which is a bit mad but I don't know like it's it's a, it's a complicated topic because look at what happened with Dubai recently did you see yeah and then the visa ban. situation yeah so so what happened first of all kind of break it down a bit more so from my understanding uh there was a visa ban on Nigerians mm. now the reason why I don't know the details um however Regardless of that, there's been rumblings a lot of a lot of the criminality that's happening in Dubai mm. is from Nigerians. But the thing about this thing is you never know. I never trust the media because in the UK, they like to make it seem that a lot of the murders come from knife crime. But actually, when you look at the number, if you wanted to pull the number of people that got murdered in a year in London, for example, like only like 20 percent always ends up being knife crime. Yeah. The rest of it is always domestic violence or guys in the pub. They punch someone and the, the guy dark, never yeah. wakes up. Like mm. So they always embellish. They always look for a way to like Make it... embellish the statistics. Yeah. So I'm not quite sure if Nigerians really were like a large percentage of the, the issues yeah. in Dubai. Or I don't know if it has to do with money getting locked up here mm. either. I'm not sure. So, so I, I, I mean, I like the way that some of the uh, private sector players are responding to that. Something like Airpeace, uh, banning flights. Uh, I think it's to um, Dubai. Yeah. Uh, so they don't, because what happens is like, we go there, we spend our money, right? I mean, if you think about it, Dubai is really designed on the premise that people around the world should come over there and spend their hard-earned cash. Um but when Nigerians go there and spend their hard-earned cash, they get treated with uh, not reciprocated in terms of the, the level of uh, respect and care. So all of the situations, um, I think Nigerians need to kind of be aware of it. And also, I like the fact that some key players are responding to that uh, mm. through kind of uh, economic actions. Um, still, right? I mean, it wasn't just Nigeria. So it was actually like 17 to 18 African countries. Okay, so the other African countries. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean... Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just at that point where we need to start building our exactly, own stuff. Like, exactly, exactly. That's, that's why you've got, got to fast track the, the, the level of development in Africa. Yeah. Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, exactly. But at, at the moment, even, even with me, there's no, like, I don't, I don't get an appeal right now, maybe because of where I am, but, like, there's no other country in the world that appeals me for a holiday other than African country. So, like, really? literally, I, right now, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I, I want to go to Cape Town, I want to go to Abidjan, I want to go to other places. I've been to the rest, a lot of other places, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm not like, 
eager like I was before. Like, oh, I want to go to this place. No, no, it's like mm. I want to go and see other African countries. So I, I'm, I want to go to every African country, but I'm not going to lie. I want to do a Brazil. I want to do like a Japan. Mm. I want to definitely see life in other continents. Yeah. Yeah. So no, I'm no, see life in other continents is good, but it's like, I think yeah. I want to do Africa first before I go back and start doing other things. Yeah. No, I, 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 me personally, I'll, I'll mix and match because especially that Brazil, like Brazil is such a big part of like Yoruba culture. Mm. So I'm very interested to see the journey and, and how they went there and kept their culture for like the last 400, 500 mm. years. I mean, um, if I go to Brazil and and and, um, and they're not transactional, I might have to just come back <laughs> I don't think you have to worry about that. They're very transactional. Really? There, boy. <laughs> very. I don't think you have to worry about that. Uh, um, but yeah, I, I definitely like the, there's Namibia, Tanzania Namibia looks gorgeous. Mm. Kenya looks developed. You know, I had to ask on my group chat. I'm in a group chat with like um, some people, you know, mm-hmm. some, yeah. And uh, I had to ask them in the group. I was like, in the other African countries, especially like a Ghana or Kenya or South Africa, people that are native, do you guys have issue with electricity and, and clean water? Everybody said, no, everything is fine. Mm. So that's literally a Lagos issue. It's a Lagos thing. No, it's a Lagos thing. In fact, it's, in fact, it's funny enough, thing, yeah? It's an island thing. It's an island thing, yeah. It's an island thing. Because I guarantee you there are places, even we're building places in Africa where electricity is 24 hours. They have water there and it's clean. In your village, the water is clean than island. Yeah, the water is very clean. Right. So yeah. it's an island thing. And it's just, we just got to understand that, okay, let's, we, we really have to step out of that, that um, this kind of idealization of, of the island a little bit. I've noticed that because it's swamp, because, swamp land. Because yeah. if you really look at it, right, apart from one or two places, it's not really, it's not really designed to be habitable. No, my, my, I mean, the viewers always comment on it. I'm always calling, calling this place a ghetto, mosquito mm. ridden ghetto. It's so, not designed to be habitable. So, so I mean, like, it's not as, that it's not designed to be habitable. It's it's that same thing I always talk about urban planning. You know, in there six, was no planning on the island. Yes, it's, it's, it's not about urban planning. There was none. It was people just started moving there. Yeah. So with urban planning, though, you would determine how many people can the city take. So right now. The planning, like already now, for example, they're saying that as you continue to go down to that Shungo Tedo side, etc., it's already really starting to get more and more congested mm. and things like that. As because Lagos is the center of Nigeria, people are still urbanization is still going on. People are still moving here to the city every mm. day. We are, it's, this place is not meant to take twenty million people or share twenty million people with the mainland. That's mm. what the issue is. It's the number of people. It's not the I mean, the infrastructure is bad, but really what makes this place so terrible and the ghetto is the sheer number of people in a mm. very small environment. Mm. So that's the, that's the issue. And like, for example, we need two more Lekki Epa Expressways. Yeah, thanks. Well, I think they're building some. I heard that there's kind of construction on one there's side. There's Lekki Coastal Road. There's, an, there's another one. Now they're trying to do build more flyovers. Flyovers will help with the with the thing. Perfect, yeah. yeah, I mean, the, all these things, for example, back in the day, there used to be roundabouts. You know, you would call it second, third roundabout. Mm-hmm. The the traffic, like people could be people could be going from Jaconde to VI and it will take them six hours for a journey that's like... 12 minutes maximum probably on a straight line so that urban planning thing is really important it's something that's done mm. in any well-developed um Please. city yeah. yeah and 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 with lagos it's, it's just not been it's not been done or it's not been done properly so i'm worried another thing is a lot of lagos is underneath sea level already mm. so you've got to be very careful where you buy a house in my mm. opinion um because you don't know if you're going to be underwater <laughs> <laughs> in about 30 years time that's crazy yeah so even think about that water bill situation as well it's, it's, it's interesting there need to be a map and people can actually go and study uh, the water belts around lagos and just understand like, mm. what, where the boundaries what the limits in five or six years w- what areas are going to be underwater you got to study all this stuff man because if you're really trying to dwell and live in so, some areas you need to yeah, know what's going the on the studies are there i mean this week every week there's they're in the news if you read business day and all these kind of newspapers mm. there's always a new article cnn did one and said try to warn people nigerians started fighting back at them to keep their mouth shut it became like a big back and forth there's there's like ample information on it online people that want to find out about it uh but 
is at the end of the day, even Echo Atlantic, mm. I know some people very close that have said it's underwater. Not that it's underwater, because they actually did build the stone wall, but more that the quality of the land is um bad. You don't know if it's true or not, but this is from somebody that works on the project. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, look, we really wish that um, these things would be built and there's there's solutions around these things. Um but like I said, we need to be more proactive when it comes to planning, man. Overall, we need to be more proactive, and then also be very strict in terms of people obeying those planning rules. Well, this is a, this is this is where it goes to that thing where even though I always preach about the private sector, this starts to fall into government de- domain. Infrastructure is within government domain, exactly. even if the projects are public-private partnerships. Yeah. This is government domain. So, so yeah. this is like if there's one thing we're going to push the government on and we should continue to push them on it's just infrastructure hmm. that includes energy uh and, and water yeah 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 no, I, I think that there are, there are definitely things around there yeah no that's that's good yeah i don't know what are you excited about for next year what are you saying uh okay so i'm excited about like so next year is really when um we will really become some one right um it's actually it's it's already kind of written in stone as long as god give us health mm. and um we're we're kind of um progressing with, with the work that we do and nothing mm-hmm. crazy happens right so so i'm excited about that i'm also excited about the fact that i'm going to start traveling next year again yeah so we've been locked down in this lagos for the last couple of months, months I, mean, yeah. I mean almost a year really yeah I mean, last time we left lagos well, i think it was, it was mid, mid, yeah. mid 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 year so next year probably a bit more traveling again mm. um hopefully we can even take our move back with us and, and go to yeah. some of the African countries and see what what's uh, the people's stories are like in this other area definitely that will be quite interesting so i'm excited to see if that can happen next year yeah um, I'm excited to to kind of um, finally settle out most of the issues, the thieving issues, like just transport, living location, all this situation, all those kind of things. Maybe next year I'm excited to see that happen. So that I know that, you know, once you sort your living out situation, you have your basic comfortable stuff, right? You can start exploring uh, other options. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of ideas I have. Uh, I want to start Mm-hmm. sewing those ideas and we might not be um, building it you know if you can but start sewing and, and letting them start growing yeah so all that kind of stuff is good um, I'm excited to see what comes out of the, the the election as well I don't know why I just, I'm just i just excited to see what comes out of it I don't want to go into much detail but it'll be good to see if Nigeria really votes for itself for, for the first time um, it'll be interesting to see that happen and yeah what do you think? me I'm very like disengaged with politics yeah yeah um i've been surprised by the polls really the polls look interesting the polls have been saying that um ob is leading which um perplexed about but yeah and i don't trust i think it might be i don't know i don't trust it for some reason but i mean it was just it's just an interesting time Um, yeah interesting time in terms of is is the populist kind of strategy going to work and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so. all, all I know is just don't let that exchange rate pass 1,000 because when I was doing my spreadsheet, yeah, and converting it back to pounds, I used 1,000 rate. So I don't want to be seeing 1,100 because of my chest. <laughs> Bruh, that exchange rate stuff every day I'm gives me start, nightmares. Yeah, like, it literally gives me nightmares every day. I, I, every time I open my, my financial models on anything, yeah, I just feel exactly. I'm just tired. I'm about to bed, yeah. man. Because I'm the trusted numbers. Yeah. And the... When I for my clients, I always do a rolling devaluation, and I devalue. I can sometimes I can devalue the currency by five percent rolling month for month because that's sometimes that's how it, it is. is. Yeah, it's so bad. So, but for me personally, I'm not trying to see that pound. I re- I tell myself now it's just one thousand. So when I'm, it's easier for me to now calculate three hundred k, three hundred pounds. That's how I just think about now, but. Yeah, I'm the only thing I feel like I like I say is infrastructure. I keep that exchange rate manageable because that exchange rate is really causing the inflation that we're all feeling. Mm-hmm. That's what's causing the issues that we're feeling in terms of the increase of prices because businesses always pass on these costs to consumers. Mm-hmm, yeah. And if their if their inputs are in foreign currency, it's becoming more and more expensive. It's eating away their profits. It gets passed on to the consumer. We pay more. Our disposable income goes down. So it's a negative 
like cycle that needs to get locked mm. because the world looks like it's entering a global recession and Nigeria's already kind of been in that space for the last four years. Mm -hmm. So I would not want a situation where... Um, you're now having a double recession. Huh? Now we're, we're... So, so yeah, I don't know. Let's let's see how it goes. Um, I, mean, I mean, I saw some rubbish. One of our previous guests posted something on Instagram. Apparently the CBN governor said that it's because of Nigerians are going to study abroad. That's why the exchange rate devalued. So. It's always a reason every every new like like. Anyways, I, I I don't even know if that's true. So like, so there, there needs to be more kind of clear accountability and everything because like we don't really know what news is true or what's not true. I'm telling I you, just be, you just be seeing. So I don't even care about that stuff. I'm anymore. telling you, I just say okay, well, in my in my little sphere of control, what can I actually even do because. All of that stuff right now just gives you anxiety for no reason. Yeah, it's just, it just, it's just, it just always, it's always a reminder that these men are just on a joke thing. Like you wake up one day, bang pomo. Instead of you to like invest in the leather industry, you will just go and bang pomo and expect the rest of that to be the action they, they to are, drive. They're on a joke thing to drive um, investment in that industry. So yeah, sometimes when you see this stuff, you're like, this place is just like it's like a reality TV show. Yeah, I, I, I mean. My favorite. Oh, I think we should go there today. Actually, eat some mm. some Jamaican food. That's why I, I like Jamaican food. Anyways, we, if, yeah, we were there we like three days ago. <laughs> time, keep you going. Get breakfast. I'm just saying because I, I just thought about the food. I, I had a chat with him. I was like, he was like, listen, like you're in Africa. Don't always think about Nigeria alone. Like you have the whole continent. Exactly. Don't worry about Nigeria. If Nigeria's not working well, look at options in other areas. Definitely. And when he said that, yeah, that's when I started thinking. I was like, yeah, like. He's absolutely right. It, like, yeah. don't always limit yourself to just Nigeria. And yeah, even if you want to make sure Nigeria works and you're trying to solve it, maybe now it might not be the right time. Maybe now it's time to, for you to sow the seed and pace yourself. But if you want the kind of immense, significant opportunities, then maybe you start exploring other areas. So, mm. so when he said that, I was like, interesting. That's when I started looking at other areas and, and was able to kind of uh, see opportunities in other, other places. Um, but Nigeria and, and early Naira in Nigeria and all that kind of stuff, it's kind of the least of my strategy. So I said this some this week, and I don't know if it's unpopular opinion, but I don't feel, I like to change people's mindset. The Naira is not the issue. It's just the amount of Naira that you earn. At the end of the day, currency mm. is currency, even if it's devaluing. So it's about the volume of Naira. So if you know you're earning 10 million Naira a month, mm. really and truly, at the end of the day, as long as you're converting that shit back, okay, maybe you might be getting less and less. 10 million Naira a month, you're even earning, I mean, if, let's just say 5 million Naira a mm. month. That's 5,000 pounds now if I use my one-to-one -one rate. Mm. Yeah. 5,000 pounds after tax is somebody earning like, I don't know, like 200,000 or something mm, like that. Mm. So you're, nobody's earning that. Yeah, yeah, true. So it's just about the volume of what you earn. Of what you earn, not, yeah, not yeah, about, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. look at the Naira like, I can't have Naira. No, I want Naira. I want millions here, two million here, three million here. I mm. actually don't mind it, you know? Okay. So I, I'm not against that. Mm. Also, with what you said, I have a different opinion as well. I believe that same thing with London. I said, you, I want to conquer Lagos and and be settled here and make sure that is always that base to run back to in Africa mm. because Lagos took time to adjust. One hundred percent, any other African country is going to take time to adjust, mm. especially as we're not even indigents. So I don't want to now put that kind of stress on my head. So I'd rather use the next couple of years to like investigate, make connections, rather than just go and dive in Dumping, yeah, to yeah. another African country. That's where. That's my approach personally. Yeah. I mean, there's always, I mean, the only scare of me or that thing, country, you always hear this random creep ha happening. <laughs> I don't think you want these or you will be brought up to this place. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's just so random. Like, it's, mm. like, it's very rare in Nigeria. Once in a while, like, because I think we just find a way to be, be, be strong about our structure, but you just be hearing these things they just pop out out of the woodworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. you think this place is not stable, boy. Yeah, but at the same time, at the end of the day, I just don't, I'm just very careful with the media because it's always so easy to fall into the trap. True. And that's why I love the Wadamayas and the tie on the Stevens because they still make sure to show the this real. place is functioning. Like mm. I said, that is the Zimbabwe videos are the most important one. Yeah, that one was crazy. Zimbabwe is neater than Lagos. That was crazy. Cleaner, Arari. structured, clean. Mm. I've, got, so, I've got friends in Zimbabwe. I need to reconnect. Same. I need to start re the Diaspora Network, fam. We need yeah, to reconnect same. and just say, listen... 
let's go and see these spaces. But the thing is that what makes IMB most important, especially this podcast, mm. right, is that we're having conversations about living in those spaces and, and being there rather than just seeing it. Because the difference between seeing and being. Yes. Right? Yeah. And this shows you what it feels like of being there. Yeah. Right? And, and that's why we need to be able to kind of make sure we capture other people's stories as well and mm-hmm. really kind of uh, get the real of what's going on. Yeah. Because uh, especially currency wise, because fam, I don't know what currency in Africa is worth mm. earning. So you just again, it's just about the volume and converting it back to dollars, mm-hmm. um, and and things like that. But yeah, we're we're at the beginning of our journey. At the end of the day, we're actually just really in our twenties, and we move back to Africa. Sometimes Facts. I just still step back and be like, do you That's know how wild. crazy that is? Like literally last night in my house, I was walking around like, girl, you actually live in Nigeria mm-hmm. like you live in Nigeria every, by every, yourself every no week, family no nothing like, every week that thought comes to my mind yeah. at least once or twice and the funniest thing is that people even look at us that we have our shit together huh <laughs> no 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 dead ass huh. like I literally walk into the same situation it's like they just think that you have your shit together it's like like if you, if nah, you knew. I am paddling on the on the knee. <laughs> <way. laughs> you know, like a dog. I like that word. You know, like paddling. a dog where the dog <laughs> is so composed and moist at the top, but underneath he's swimming like this. <laughs> Definitely, that's I exactly what we are, right? So, yeah, so, uh, so at the end of the day, we need to just uh, yeah. It's just it's interesting that we're here. It's always good that it's we're here. Insane that it's we're insane here. though. It's insane. I must say because like. Considering what oh I just sorry so considering what we left right it's it's kind of very interesting but then again like and that's journey because it other people are gonna go through this journey I hundred mm-hmm. percent know that they might not know it now yeah but later on in the future they're gonna come on this journey mm-hmm. and having a um a road star blueprint of people who've gone through similar things yeah will be interesting yeah um. Yeah, man. I just, it's just, it's just, it's just actually mad. It's like, mad. I actually live in Nigeria, and people still meet me, and they're like, "Oh, like, how long have you been around?" I'm like, two years. They almost collapsed. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, what? By choice? I'm like, yeah, by choice. Like, yeah. it's the best decision I've ever made. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I really start to understand when they say that like, this is a country that doesn't work, because when water doesn't come out your tap, yeah, you're actually like. But you know what, yeah, that's that's fine. But once you can kind of have a, a an average solution, and then you see the bigger picture of things, you just kind of. I think it's so important for people that move back to experience. You said this to me this week, and you were spot on to not come in at the highest level, not come in at our London level, mm. and see a little bit of what happens below. It's very important it's because very important. the life I was living for two years was literally top one percent mm. and it was a bubble which is why i'm mm. going through different kind of shocks yeah seeing what it's like so it's very important to see how even the top 10 percent live mm. because it's very different it's different isn't it to how the top one to three percent is different yeah it's different so it's good it's humbling it makes you a bit more relatable and understandable understanding of 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 people's woes it makes you understand why people are so angry in this country as well. Yeah. Because if I was getting on that cramped top, but that white bus. Every day. Yeah. No, yeah. No, I, don't, I don't know. So. That's why even even just yeah, when it comes to people, I don't, I don't get too tough on them. Because like the country is already tough on you, boy. How has it affected you spiritually? Spiritually? Well, living in Nigeria. Yes. So I'm always running to peace. Hmm. Literally always running to peace. Okay. Anything that brings that that brings peace to me, mm. I literally crave it. Interesting. All right. And also like interacting with people. I don't like interacting with a lot of people. If you notice me yeah, too much, yeah. I'm, I'm a, a little bit more reserved. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I can go out here once in a while, but just every when there's too many people in, in, in a place, I don't feel comfortable and all this kind of stuff, right? So I've been able to guide my spirits from the bullshit because of my natural state of how I'm always pre- protective about that I'm finding peace right so I make it I make it difficult for people to get access to me I make it uh, I'm always in a very peaceful situations I'm always trying to find myself in um, if I see that there's kind of chaos here but that's the in thing I wouldn't do that because I, I know I know that I would like by the time I come out I'll be so drained that I can't even stand being in that chaos right so I'm always running to peace and I feel like 
my spirit my spirituality has improved because I'm it's drawing me a little a lot more closer to God. Mm. Right. But that doesn't mean that um it was different from the way it was in London. It was very similar as well. Okay. For me in terms of my spirituality. I was always at peace. I was always a place of solace for people. Mm. Right. So when people like have a chaos in life, they're able to get through to me and yeah. kind of get in. They feel comfortable. Interesting. So, yeah, and yeah, that's, that's kind of it. What would you say? Do you think spirituality is? I've not felt safe, and I don't like that feeling because I'm a very carefree, free mm. spirit. So I've had to arm myself spiritually. So right now, moving to Lagos has made me very, very spiritual. I've always been spiritual, but it's amped me to the extreme level, and mm. um, because without relying on God and feeling like I have spiritual protection. It's um mm. yeah, it's a bit crazy. So so so, so I, one thing I believe is I believe like God and devil are in people, mm-hmm. right? And you need to be able to kind of see that, feel that energy, and look at these around these sort of people. I feel a bit there's a bit more of this energy that I don't like. But my answer is we bit more this energy I like, and just surround yourself with that more often. It's not about surrounding yourself. I've definitely, I'm always been an excellent subconscious self-selector of people. Mm. It's more about situations happening to you. Yeah, but this is if 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 situations happen to you, is because you've no. Remember you've, what you've we discussed. Put yourself. Go no. ahead. Okay, go ahead. Remember what we discussed last month, literally last episode what about you how you, we can be living our lives and Lagos can bring madness to you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the end of the day. Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my point. So it's like. You, the spirituality is protecting you about against what you cannot see or what you could for, for not foresee. So, mm. being closer to God could literally save you. Like He could stop True. you from going out at three p.m. instead of going out at six p.m. Well, know? if you have if you have God energy in you, yeah, that would automatically happen. No, you have to work. It's a relationship. The way I look at it mm. spiritually, like it's a relationship with God, right? So, it, I don't know through which which lens people were like. Um, relate to him but I'm trying to really work on the fruits of the spirit mm. That's there's multiple fruits each one you work on over time like you said patience we've discussed before mm-hmm. you know there's self control is, is another one yeah. you know so these are things that you work on they're not mm. they're not like they're not, yeah. instant automatic if you've got the energy that's mm. how I view it personally uh, but yeah regardless I think no, number one Lagos has definitely made me more spiritual. In fact, interesting. I can't even shower without blasting gospel music because I'm just scared that really? I'll see one. It's, it's actually really, it's my phobia of insects that's mm. made me spiritual. Yeah. Because I just keep repeating, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. And that's why I find the strength to spray the, to spray the insects and just kill it there. And there. <laughs> so it has made me more spiritual and rely on God more. No, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. We'll cut for now. Yeah, man, but it's about to get late. This is a calm episode. Yeah, December's coming through, so I can't wait to have all so other from people here onwards. From we're about to have our London massive in the studio, boy. Yeah, it's that would be, be jokes. That would be jokes. Have a good week, guys. See you next week. Hey, guys, we've got some good news for you today. Fantastic news. Yes, because I can't wait. we've been hearing everything you've been saying, mm-hmm. and we've settled down over here, and now we are proud to announce the IMB Concierge Service. Whoop. Yeah. So our concierge service really would help you guys to support you with any problem you have in Nigeria. If you want to start up a business, you need some research done, IMB is here to help you. If you want your properties to be checked up on, we can also support you with that. Just anything you need. What are the things that the IMB concierge service can do? Personal shopping. Woo! You know, if you've got real estate investments, you need someone to check. Have you got a shop here that you're managing from abroad? We can go and check it out for you. Do you want us to buy you a gift? There's so many things that we can do because we know it's so hard to find people to trust from abroad. That's true. And you can reach the IMB service on yes. our WhatsApp number, yes. which is plus 234-904-549. 9846.